All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about remainder theorem of uh, polynomial division. Remainder theorem is essentially, uh, they're asking you, okay, if you divide by this, what's the remainder? So they don't want to know what the factor term is, uh, like usual when you do polynomial division. If you haven't done anything with polynomial division or you don't know anything about it, this is not the place to start. Remainder theorem is one small aspect of it, so you should probably look over synthetic division of polynomials and probably long division as well. Originally, remainder theorem was based on the idea of long division. In most cases, you can do synthetic division because all it really states is when I divide a function, we're going to call it p of x, so any one of those long ones you can think of, x to the third minus blah blah blah, and you divide it by a simple binomial, so x minus something, x minus 2, x minus 6, then your the question that you'd asked for the remainder theorem is, okay, what's piece of that number? So they're really saying when you divide by uh, minus this, what do you get? The real issue is there's a sign change. If they say, okay, what's p of 4? They want to know what the remainder is when you divide by x minus 4. If they ask for p of negative 3, they want to know, okay, what's the remainder when you divide by x plus 3? So there's a little bit of a changeover. It's not like it's complicated. It's just one of those things. Let's just do one and move on. Um, in this case, they give you the function x to the third plus 4x squared plus 4x. And then they say, okay, what's p of negative 2? And what they're really asking here is, okay, if I divide by x plus 2, what do I have left over? What's the remainder? So the nice thing is, since you have it in this form, you can do synthetic division. The even nicer part is if as long as it's in this setup, or sometimes it'll say a is equal to, and remember, since it's x minus a, the sign's already given to you when they, they say a is equal to, so they would just say uh, a is equal to negative 2. That's another way you could write it. Um, you just take the negative 2 and put it down here. Whereas if they give you x plus 2 to do synthetic division, you have to change it. In this format, you don't. Anyway, take your coefficients, and there's no coefficient on the constant term. Uh, my suggestion is you take the last column and make like a little kind of shoot uh, where eventually the thing that falls out, whatever the remainder is, is going to be your answer because they're asking you just about the remainder, hence remainder theorem. Bring down your 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 2 times 2 is uh, negative 4 gives you 0. This will give you 0, so you end up with 0. So the answer to your question is, okay, what is p to the negative 2? Well, there's no remainder, so you just say it's 0. And you can test that by going back and multiplying x plus 2 and what this works out to be is x squared plus 2x plus 0 if you want, but I'm not going to. And then you're just doing Combining your like terms here. And you can see this is your answer. So there isn't a remainder, it's good. So if you do all this and you get like this little number here, that's the remainder and that's all they're really asking you for. If they say, uh, when a, what's the remainder when a equals negative 2? You do the exact same thing. So it depends on what kind of terminology they use. I'll do one more. The function 2x to the third power minus x squared plus 10x plus 5. They want to know, well, what's p of 1 half? And what that really means, uh, of course, in case you forgot from a whole one slide ago, or not really slide, I mean, they're pieces of paper. You're not clueless about it. Um, x minus 1 half is what we're dividing by. You may also see, of course, a equals 1 half. And all that is a legitimate way to write it, whatever. We just want to know the remainder, it doesn't matter. Since it's in this form, I can go ahead and put this in, set up my synthetic division. I'm going to write all your coefficients out. I'm going to make my number shoot here, and hopefully I'll come up with something that I can use. Um, bring down your 2. 2 times 1 half is, of course, positive 1. This one gives me 0. So 1 half times 0 is 0. 10 plus 0 is 10. 10 times uh, 1 half gives me 5. And 5 plus 5 is 10. Don't in your mind automatically just write 0 here because you see that they're opposite. You're actually adding in synthetic division. So there's my answer. So when they ask me, so what is piece of 1 half? 
I can say, yeah, it's 10. Well, how do you check your answer if you're inclined to do so? Well, that's not too hard. You just take x minus 1 half. Remember, if you just have it in this form, you'll have to change the sign to check. And then you'll end up with x squared plus 10. Because there's no x term, this is a 0. x to the, oh, sorry, 2x squared. I don't know what I was thinking. So it's 2x to the third plus 10x minus 1x squared, because I'm doing 2 times negative uh, 1 half here, which gives you negative 1x squared, uh, minus 5. Negative 1 half times 10 is negative 5. Now I'll tag this plus 10 on the back. I'll get all my like terms together. So it's 2x to the third power minus x squared uh, plus 10x. And then negative 5 plus 10 is, of course, plus 5. So it, this number does match this. So I know I have the correct answer. Anyway, that's remainder theorem. It's not really that complicated. It's basically just another way of asking stuff they've probably asked before. It's the notation that's the real issue.